Good morning. Good morning. Breakfast is gonna be very simple. It's just gonna be a banana and then some buttered 100% wool, wool, 100% wheat toast. So if you guys haven't realized by now, I'm actually in Portland, Oregon right now. So I'm about to go downtown to the Mac to get a workout in, and I'm also gonna do a first touch technical session in the squash court with a ball, like I usually do here. So before I go, this is my very first Christmas, 1992. I was cute. Am I on here? Yeah. I'll just I'll just put a black square or blur out your face. How about that? You what? Do you not want that? Not in the morning. What if I blur you out? Oh. Whoops. There we go. Wait a second. I'm messing up everywhere. I'm taking my mom's car. See you later. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do this voiceover in one go. So first things first, I hopped on the treadmill and I did about 10 minutes of just like a seven mile per hour speed. Then I hopped on this hack squat machine. I did no weight at all for the first set and I did about 25 reps just to warm up the legs even more after the run. Then I threw in a 45 and 25 and did four sets of 12 reps. After that, I hopped on the TRX band, put my feet in the loops and just did kind of like hanging crunches. I don't even know what you call these things, leg raises, knee raises. Up to my elbows, I did 10 reps, just normal straight and then I alternated five on each side. I superseted the TRX band ab exercise with a step up, so single leg step up, just focusing on the right leg, did about 15 reps, and then immediately after that, I switched over to my left leg and did 15 reps of this, bringing my foot all the way down, back up, and trying to explode up. Now, these are all kind of like rehab exercises that I'm supposed to do as well, but I mean, they're great soccer exercises. You guys can add weight if this is too easy for you, but for me, this is good. Uh, then I did the leg extension machine, again, four sets, of this and I did about 15 to 20 reps, kind of just feeling it. Uh, picked a heavy weight that was challenging, but I did higher reps. And then I supersetted the leg extensions with the hamstring curls. I always love doing this kind of superset back and forth. Just finished a really good leg workout. A lot of people ask if I do, uh, if I listen to music when I train. And I honestly don't really like it that much. I get too distracted. I like it when I work out, run, lift. But when it comes to playing soccer, I, I like no music. That's just my personal preference though. In today's session, I'm gonna do like all first touch stuff with a big ball and a small ball. Sorry if the echo. Echo! It's really bad in here. I just have to talk quiet. We'll see what this sounds like with the echo.
Fantastic, fantastic first touch session. Let's see, it was 52 minutes long. My weightlifting was about 45 minutes long. Um, really, really happy with everything. I think I'm gonna go back to my house, foam roll, stretch, shower, and then I actually have a doctor's appointment, kind of like a second, or actually a now a sixth opinion on my groin and hip flexor. So hopefully that goes well. So it's about 10 o'clock, back from everything. Before I get comfortable, before I shower, before I need anything else, I want to do a good yoga and foam rolling session right now. So let's do it. So I'm gonna put up my boy Millionaire Hoy and get a 30 minute total body deep stretch yoga for runners and high intensity interval athletes. So that's one thing that you know I feel so much better doing now is just doing a whole bunch of mobility work like foam rolling and yoga, really focusing on my tight areas. Because before when I was younger, like 15 through 22, I didn't stretch at all. Like I stretched at the end of training, like you know that half kind of when your coach is like, okay, quad stretch, hamstring stretch, and you're kind of like talking through it. But like I never really did any extra mobility work. At the time, 15 to 20, I was fine because my body was so elastic and loose already that I had no injury problems, no tightness really, until I started getting up until 22, 23. And I started getting very tight. I started almost to the point where walking around my, my lower back, my glutes would tighten up a lot, just because I was doing so much soccer and weightlifting without any yoga or without any stretching. So especially now that I'm older, like I need a longer warm up. I need to do these foam rolling. I need to do this yoga and stretching or else I really tighten up fast. So it's just something like I really noticed as I've progressed through my career, I need this more. So it's you know, kind of realizing what stage you are in your career and realizing what you should focus on, what you should do, what you can leave out, and kind of go with that. And like even for my career now, I really kind of feel like I'm strong enough. I feel like I'm strong enough in the gym and I feel like I'm explosive enough on the field. So I kind of really don't focus that much on progressing up the weight as much right now. I'm not really focused on my plyometrics and working on speed and explosion because those are my strengths that I've worked on a lot during my youth career. Now what I really should focus on is stretching, yoga, being loose, and then again, just my technical training as always, and then trying to stay strong and continue the weightlifting so that I can prevent injuries where, where all my whole body is in balance and strong. Um, while I'm talking about this, my dad's dancing in the background because they just got home. <laughs> so that's, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna shower and then I have a doctor's appointment, basically just like a sixth or seventh opinion now, just about the groin. I just wanna do everything right with my groin. I got acupuncture tomorrow morning. I got another MRI scheduled on the 21st, so I'm not leaving anything unturned. I'm doing everything because I don't wanna regret this later. For breakfast, I'm having onions. We're having onions and butter, so pretty excited for that. No, but seriously having a like a scramble, so onions, mushrooms, and spinach with a lot of eggs mixed up in there. My beautiful mother is cooking, so gonna do that. How many eggs? 10. No, for real. I usually have three or four, probably four. While she is cooking, I'm gonna hop up real quick, go in the shower, get ready, and then uh, for my doctor's appointment. That just, you just almost jammed my finger in the cabinet. Ooh. Now, having said exactly what I said, I really do believe that heavy lifting and powerlifting and building up a stronger and better body was influential and probably one of the main reasons why I made it onto the D1 level and professional level. Basically, what I want you to get from this is that you should always look at your own game right now, right now and what your strengths and weaknesses are and building up those weaknesses. When I was 15, 16, 17, my weakness, what I was told why I couldn't play D1 soccer, why I was told I couldn't start for varsity, why I was cut from teams, was because I was too small, too tiny, not athletic, and they just said that like technically you're good, but you're not big enough, you're not strong enough, you're not athletic enough to make it into the division one college soccer, or even professional level or whatever. So as like a 14, 15 year old, I was looking at myself and being like, yeah, that is true. Technically I'm at all these other guys level, but I'm getting pushed off, I'm getting bullied out on the field. So what I did is I really focused on getting stronger. I started a strength program. I really started learning from my strength coaches and other weightlifting people that were around me and had good bodies, good athletic builds that I wanted to emulate. I followed their workouts and I started to find this trend of that they're all doing compound lifts and they're progressively getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And I would talk to them how I just can't gain weight, how I'm too small, no matter how much I eat, I can't gain weight. And they kind of informed me that no, you're just not still, even though you think you're eating a lot, you're not eating enough. 
And so I wasn't in the caloric surplus because I worked out, ran, I was so active and I had such a high metabolism that even though I thought I was eating four or five meals a day, it still wasn't enough. So I increased how much I was eating to the point where I was just, I wanted to throw up during the day because I was eating so much food. And I continued this heavier and heavier strength program and I built a very athletic and strong and fast build, which combined with my technical skills at the time, allowed me to get multiple D1 offers. And so right now I'm looking at myself and strength and speed and athleticism wise, I'm wherever I usually go, I'm usually one of the top fastest and top strongest on the team. So there's not as much of a need for me now to focus on that and what I should be focusing on is my technical skills and my first touch and my quality of my passes and my, my crosses and all that stuff. And I really encourage you to do the same at your game. If you're technically good enough and you can beat all these players but coach after coach or player after player is telling you that you're not strong enough, you're not fast enough, then maybe you should look into building strength, into increasing your speed, explosive speed with plyometrics. Now if you are very, very strong and technically you're really, really good but you're just not fit and you can't last 90 minutes and coaches and coaches are telling you you need to lose a little bit of weight and you get more fit, then focus more on that fitness aspect of your game. I imagine it really is like the FIFA rating system of all your skills and your goal is basically to try to push everything up. And you're always kind of going at the bottom and go, okay, what's my lowest skill? Passing, bring that up. Okay, now my strength is weak, bring that up. And you want to get, basically get everything up to 99. And that's how I kind of imagine it, just bringing up these low points higher and higher. And collectively, you're pushing everything up higher up to the 99. If that makes any sense at all, or if I'm just rambling, I have no clue, but. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my doctor's appointment right now. It's actually on my own insurance, just because I'm so paranoid about getting healthy that I would rather pay money on my own insurance and also do all the stuff under Workman's Comp in St. Louis FC, but I also just wanna see my own doctor, see everything else, just to see what they think, to get more opinions. I just don't wanna miss anything. I wanna stand The positive thing that he said is that, that PRP injections can really help this speed this process up, especially with the groin. I'm gonna get healthy. I'm gonna get healthy. Right now I'm just gonna go back home and then pretty much uh, just edit. Now let's see, it's 2.45 in the afternoon. I am just going to edit and film a two minute Tuesday for tomorrow, because it's Monday. Um, and then I'm gonna edit this video, but it's just gonna be a lot, a lot of work. So two hours later, I finished the two minute Tuesday that needs to go up tomorrow. So I did everything, color correction, added pictures, music, edited it all up, added everything. So it is ready, I just gotta export it. Boom. Anyway, me and my dad are about to go get dinner right now with my sister. I'm not gonna bring the camera because that's obnoxious and I just wanna have dinner with my family. And I'll see you when I get back. Yeah.